she's got that um, consulting experience, that you know, experience in the corporate world. She obviously has done her own research. She obviously has an academic background. She's now got years behind her in an academic um, path. And I think the marrying of those two things together is a real benefit. I think that a lot of us can learn from that. And I really think her influence on the student body here and whether they pursue an academic path or they go and take that knowledge into industry, like I think we all can learn from that. And I think, you know, bringing the, the concept, the intellectual curiosity with the real pragmatism on like what works in the real world in context, um, that might not be of interest to everybody. But for, for those who have that interest, I think that's something that's a little bit unique sometimes in an academic context. And so I really think, uh, I think we're all lucky to have her in the role that she's in. If you think about her, 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 this installation and her rising in new and new leadership, there's something I think really quite inspiringly appropriate about it. Because, in a way, University of Toronto is maybe the greatest university in Canada. Toronto is maybe the most multicultural city in the world. Rhonda represents all the properties the wonderful properties of both multiculturalism and immigrants coming to Canada, all this kind of stuff, and giving voice to those who've been marginalized. And, you know, she was a Canada research chair, exemplary research, standing witness to um, intellectual standards and so on and so forth. So she brings those together at this moment in history. She doesn't need to take up all of the spotlight. She doesn't need that. She's happy to share the stage. She's happy to shine her the light on someone else. Um, and I think that goes back to the generosity and, and the humility. Um, yeah, she does. She does what she can to like highlight the strengths and accomplishments of her of her people too. So that's really that's really special. So as a woman in STEM, STEM stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, and Mathematics. Rhonda empowers women to participate in STEM-related activities. So for example, she gave me the opportunity to be part of an Apathon as a judge. And this is something I thought I'd never be part of. And it's through those events and activities that Rhonda helps women uh, achieve their goals, but also empowers them to look into fields that you know, we may have not looked at before. Dr. Rhonda McEwen's leadership style is connected to her sense of community and she's the personification of black girl magic. Now the word we use for magic is wanga and wanga is the pouring of one's internal energy into everything around us. And so this pouring of energy into what she does, this love for the people who are there and then the ability to listen to what they want and try to facilitate their heart's desires. Yeah, that's a big thing. That's what makes Rhonda very, very special. As we see in the Caribbean, we had to jam them and jam them hard. I honor you, big sis. I love you so much. Um, if you didn't know, you are my idol. And the bar by which I measure myself, and uh, I promise one day when I grow up, I'll be just like you. I want to start by saying thank you. Thank you so very much to all of the people who contributed to my being here today, including, of course, my family, um, the ones who have seen me get up groggy in the morning and who've seen me work well into the night and have been there for me. Thank you to the staff, faculty, librarians, and of course the students who have come along with me on this journey. But I also want to really be grateful to this new village, the village of the Victoria University and the University of Toronto, who have welcomed me with open arms and have trusted me with a very important job. Thank you very much.